All right. Um, hi everyone. This is still Mista. Welcome to week two, suggested day two. Feel free to look at this dude now. If you've ever seen a lava lamp before, um, they have this goopy stuff in them that kind of rises and falls, and it rises as it gets heated up by a light bulb, and it cools um, and falls back down. So why might that be? be um, using what we've learned in chemistry so far, and where else does this happen? Take a moment to think about that. Pause if you'd like. All right. Um, so this happens because of density. You might know that as things get heated up, um, they'll actually expand. And that's kind of the goal of today's lesson. But as you heat things up, um, the molecules move away from each other a little bit. They have more energy. Uh, and then as they get less dense, they start floating. And then as they cool down, they kind of shrink back down and then get more dense and fall down. This happens all the time when um, you have convection cells. So you might have learned in earth science about um, plates moving with these magma convection cells in the asthenosphere, um, in the atmosphere, in the oceans, it happens all the time. So 3.6 um, is about Charles's law, um, and Charles's law is the first of the three gas laws that we'll be covering this week. Um, as far as learning goals go, you just want to be able to explain what Charles's law is and use it to solve your gas law problems. Um, Charles's law relates volume to temperature. So what happens to volume when you change the temperature? What happens to temperature when you change the volume? Um, if you look into your workbooks, you'll see this graph probably. Um, but Charles's law basically says that volume, symbolized by a V and usually given in liters, is directly proportional to temperature. Um, T. Temperature has to be written in Kelvin. And we talked about the Kelvin scale yesterday. So what does that mean? It means if volume goes up, temperature goes up with it. If volume goes down, temperature goes down with it. They kind of go in the same direction. Um, mathematically speaking, what that means is that V divided by T is always a constant number. Uh, that ratio between them is always the same. So um, if I have a gas at some volume, V1, and at some temperature, T1, if the pressure stays the same, it has to be under constant pressure, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later um, in future days, but Volume and temperature, if those are the only things you're changing, then uh, your new volume, if you like expanded the container, um, or uh, if you change the temperature, your new volume will divided by your new temperature will also be that same number. So it's just a formula that you can use um, like any other. Um, so as we were saying in the do now, as temperature increases, volume increases as well. The molecules kind of have more energy, they're shaking around, they're moving away from each other. And so density goes down. Because volume goes up, density goes down. Um, this kind of explains the difference between like solids and gases. So um, you might know that dry ice turns directly into a gas. What happens when dry ice turns into a gas? Like at the molecular level, what's going on? So again, dry ice, solid CO2 forms at really, really cold temperatures. And then when you expose it to room temperature, it's very hot all of a sudden. The molecules have a lot more energy. They can start moving around. Um, and Charles's law says that um, basically when you heat, heat up that solid CO2 at room temperature, uh, the gases, you know, as T goes up, V also goes up. They expand a bunch. So things get dispersed a lot. Um, and so model D is kind of what that gas would look like. Um, they spread out and they're spread out evenly, randomly. Um, they're always moving in different directions with a different distribution of speeds. That's what kinetic molecular theory says. Um, so yeah, as you change something into a gas or give it energy, uh, remember kinetic energy is what T actually is. T is a measure of how energetic things are. Then it gets a lot bigger. That's kind of qualitatively what Charles's law means. Um, so as you watch what happens here, or maybe it's best if you Go and click this video on the slides yourself, but I'll just kind of skip to the relevant part. Um, you can kind of see here, you kind of push a balloon into this bubbling substance. Yeah. And then taking them out. Pretty cool to watch. Go ahead and click the video on the slides yourselves.
All right. You're gonna hear the balloon material crackling as they reinflate. All right. Well, you can see that yourself, um, but think about what that means in terms of Charles's law. How does that work? All right, and then the last thing of this lesson, it's pretty short, is to try this problem out. So give it your best shot and I'll solve it in a second. So Charles's law says that temperature and volume are related in the following way. V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Um, that is, the volume and temperature will both go up or both go down so that the proportion will always stay the same. They're directly proportional. So um, it begins, this gas, with a volume of 120 liters and the temperature is 40 degrees Celsius. So V1 um, is 120 liters. And then T1 is 40 degrees Celsius, but um, we need temperature in Kelvin. So Kelvin is um, Celsius plus 273. So 40 plus 273 um, is, uh, some difficult math here, 313, I hope. So 313 Kelvin, not degrees Kelvin, just Kelvin, equals um, some new volume that we don't know, V, over the new temperature after the temperature dropped. It became negative 10 degrees Celsius. Um, so negative 10 plus 273 is 263. At this point, all you need to do is solve for your new volume, the unknown volume. So we're going to solve for this V right here. And to get V on its own, it's being divided by 263. So we're going to multiply both sides by 263. Uh, that will cancel away. And then when you do the math on the left, 263 times 120 divided by 313, um, you end up getting something like 100, and this is volume, so liters is V2, the new volume. And sig figs checks out because we only have one sig fig on the temperature here. Um, so 100 liters. And that's it. It's using Charles's law.